We are Sorted, a group of mates who have your back when it comes to all things food. From cooking battles to gadget reviews Man, it's not worth it. and cookbook challenges to a midweek meal packs app. Crack your eggs, bake. We uncover the tools that'll help us all cook and eat smarter. Join our community where everything we do starts with you. Hello, welcome to Fridge Cam. A little while ago, we tested some DIY make your own food kits and you guys seem to love it. So we've got some more to test and this time we have brought our most testy chef along to judge them. Hello, James. Hello, Jamie. Are you ready to test some DIY kits? I am ready. Let's get the first one out. Come on then, lift the cloche. It's a haggis kit because I'm Scottish, Jamie. Yes, mate. I've got a confession. I've made this kit before. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I got it as a birthday present once because, you know, I'm Scottish and a chef. <laughs> So, a DIY haggis kit makes sense. Well, you might not need this description then, but for the benefit of you guys at home, this is an authentic, make your own Scottish haggis kit with all the seasonings, cases, and a tasty recipe. Fill with the meat or veg you want in your haggis. No fancy equipment needed, just a haggis kit, your choice of filling, a bowl, and a large pan. Nice one. I'll, I'll actually reserve judgment until we've made it, but I'm quite intrigued to try it again. Well, let's crack on and make a haggis. First instruction, choose your filling. You can use pre-minced meat or meat pieces. Anything goes, I like that. We've got lamb's liver, calf's liver, beef chunks and lamb leg chunks. It says here that traditionally you should use two to one mixture of mutton plucks and liver. So we'll use lamb meat and lamb liver. Cook your meat in a pot of water until piping hot throughout. For how long? Who knows? Doesn't say. I'm gonna guess that's maybe 10 minutes. My meat is cooked. It smells good. In a mixing bowl, blend the pack of haggis mix with 300 grams of reserved stock. So that is suddenly stock because you've cooked meat in it for 10 minutes. Yeah, look at it. I'd let you smell it, but you can't. <laughs> but it's, it smells good. It smells meaty. I like that we're weighing the stock. That's good. So this is forming a paste. It really does smell like haggis. The instructions for this do say you can flavour your haggis with whiskey. Mince the meat or chop into very small pieces. Chop it. I reckon this is looking pretty good. Next step. Add the pack of vegetable suet to the small pieces of meat and mix well and then add the paste and mix well. Next, at this point, it is wise to make sure that your haggis mixture weighs 1.36 kilos. Um, if you need to make up any shortfall, do it with more of your stock. How are we looking? We have 1.2 kilos. Well, we'll just trust the recipe, right? Fill the mixture into your haggis bungs. This, this is the bit I remember being quite tricky. Is this a great time to reference that we're not putting the whiskey in? Oh. Try to squeeze out as much air as possible and then take your twine and tie the open end of the haggis buns tightly and securely. Again, try to keep out as much air as possible. I've done a longy and a shorty. I'm gonna cook it. Hot water, 80 degrees, so like just simmering uh, for approximately 25 to 30 minutes. Okay. Haggis time. They both haven't burst and it doesn't look like any water got into either of them. Drain and either serve immediately or cool in cold water for 30 minutes and refrigerate or freeze. So this is the point at which you might save them, which I did, because it's really hard to eat three haggis <laughs> at the same time, like you can't. So what would you be looking for from a good haggis? So it's, a, it's very moist, but it's also a little bit crumbly. You look for flavor, really. Cheers, mate. Cheers. It's definitely got the flavor of haggis. It's really cloudy. I wonder if it could have not done with that extra water that we added. Yeah. The flavour is really, really good. It tastes like haggis. It's really deep. I can't taste the whiskey. Mm. Like if you can get offal, you should definitely use offal as well as meat. I want to keep eating it, but the texture is not good. Okay, mate. So overall thoughts of the kit? I feel like it was relatively straightforward. I'm not sure it's a great introduction for people who are trying haggis for the first time. It's, it feels good to make it myself, but not as good as the stuff I can buy in the shop. So how much do you think the kit sells for? 15 pounds? It's 18 pound 95. 
I mean, if I was buying a gift for someone, it would probably seem reasonable. You're buying somebody an experience. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Be careful. It's nut and seed bread. This is bottle bread, a baking mixture from inside a glass bottle. It has wheat flour, rye flour, sunflower seeds, flax seed, almonds, pumpkin seeds, sesame, salt, and dry yeast. So this has everything in it that you'll need to bake bread. At it's water. just missing a little bit of liquid. Have you ever used something like this before? I have not. I do enjoy baking bread, mm -hmm. as I'm sure you're aware. So to bake the bottle bread, put the bottle contents together with two tablespoons of balsamic vinegar and 500 millilitres of lukewarm water into a mixing bowl and knead the dough to a homogenous mass. Balsamic vinegar in bread, is that normal? I guess not, no, but why not? I'll be interested if we can taste it. Right, we good. That is a homogenous mass. It's a quite a wet dough, but it kind of holds together because I think I think because of all the seeds. What's next? Fill your dough in a greased box. You did say this had yeast in it, didn't you? Yes, yeah. But there's no proving in the method. No. So how much is it going to rise? I, I, don't, I don't know. Usually if you don't need it, it's like you're not developing any of the gluten either, so you have to give it a lot more time to prove. So mate, that's going to go into a preheated oven at 180 degrees Celsius for 60 minutes. Hey, we'll put it in and see what happens. Oh, it's, it's heavy, it's really heavy. Your bread's done. It looks to have risen. We have a loaf. It looks dense AF. I think it will be. We're not saying dense AF as in a bad thing. No, no, no. Because you can get really dense bread, like a rye bread or something, so. Ooh. <laughs> it, it worked. Should we try it? It smells great. Tasty. It's just what I expected. Like it's it's a really crusty, like dark brown outside. But a nice chew in the middle. I love how many seeds are in it as well. I've got a real thing for seedy bread. It's really well seasoned as well. Like you don't have to do anything apart from add water. And balsamic vinegar. I'm not sure I can taste that. I wouldn't know it's there. I think because I bake bread, people think I won't like these, but I really like this. It's great. Like it's everything that I'd want from it. Is it the type of loaf that you would bake? No, and that's a good thing as well. All right, mate, how much do you think the kit is? Uh, uh, 12.99. Well, converted from euros, it actually works out to 12 pounds and 17 pence. Comes in a nice bottle, and why not? It's a good gift. You don't want to be gifting people little bags of flour, do you? Like, you have to do something with it. So, yeah, I'm cool with it. I'm cool with it. This one almost fits. Almost. Make your own mozzarella, ricotta, goat's cheese, and paneer. Do you want to give mozzarella a go? Yeah, I'd love to get, make mozzarella. James, this is the Artisan Cheesemakers Kit. This beautifully presented kit contains everything you need to make 10 batches of delicious gourmet cheeses. It's another thing that you really don't need a kit for, like citric acid and rennet is actually really easy to get hold of. but. You need the kit to be told to make the cheese. Yeah. Otherwise, it's one of those things that you'll do someday. Measure 250 milliliters of water, pour into a bowl, and add one and a half teaspoons of the citric acid and stir until dissolved. That can be set aside. Measure 60 mil of water, cut a quarter of a rennet tablet and crush it. Stir until dissolved. Pour the milk into a saucepan and stir in the citric acid solution and place on a medium heat to 32 degrees, stirring gently. And they gave you that thermometer? They gave you the thermometer, yeah. It's no digital thermometer, but it'll do. I think that's there. Take it off, and now we add the rennet solution slowly and stir for 30 seconds. Cover the saucepan and let it rest for 10 minutes. Okay, mate, 10 minutes. We should have curds floating on the top of the pan, and we do. Oh, hey! So I have to Gently cut the curds into even pieces and then place the saucepan back on the stove over a medium heat to warm them through to 41 degrees Celsius. Stir slowly, but don't break up the curds too much. They will eventually clump together and separate from the yellow whey. Okay, I think I've done an okay job. That's come off the heat now, it's at 41 degrees, and I've got to keep stirring five minutes. You use a slotted spoon to ladle the curds into a bowl and microwave for a minute, then drain off the whey 
and using a spoon, fold the curds inwards on themselves a few times and then microwave for another 30 seconds at a time until it reaches 57 degrees. 57 degrees, took a while but I'm gonna fold it in on itself a few times. You're not supposed to work it too much. It now says sprinkle the salt over the cheese and work in by folding the curds over several times. Am I supposed to fold it again? It was, it was fine and then suddenly I, I started working it and it is no longer fine. I don't know how to save that. I'm improvising now and just like putting it through some cheesecloth. I don't know enough about cheese making, so I don't know how to save it. For me, this is the downfall of a kit like this, is that you've got no one to ask what's gone wrong. That didn't work, but we did it again. And it did work. Uh, the only thing that we changed was to use a digital thermometer. So after it came out of the microwave, all I did was fold it over on top of itself. It looked a lot smoother when it came out. So folded it over on itself and pinched it into little balls. Still didn't get it perfect because the balls have gone flat and I don't know why. But it's cheese. We've got cheese and we didn't have cheese earlier. <sighs> Mozzarella's hard, man. Can we try it? Yeah, let's try it. James. Shall we address the fact that I can cut it like a cake? <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. It tastes like mozzarella. Mm. And the difficult thing about that is mozzarella doesn't taste of much, just on its own. It's not quite as squeaky as pizza mozzarella, but it's not soft and milky and like oozes liquid like a buffalo mozzarella. How much do you reckon it costs? I'm gonna go high. I'm gonna go for $24.99. I can tell you that the price of this kit is $24.99. No. No, it's it. not! You nailed it! Yes! <laughs> Spot on. But is it worth the 25 pounds? For that price, for me, I, I probably spend a bit more and go on a cheese making course. Yeah. Come on then, mate, last one. Chorizo? Interesting. Okay, that's, that's a good one. This is the make your own homemade chorizo sausages, a punchy paprika and chili foodie gift delicacy. Once filled, we promise that the exciting curing wait, five to eight days, will produce a truly magnificent gift for your taste buds. Now this kit makes a ton of chorizo. So today we're just gonna ask you to make a quarter. Okay, I'm adding my pork mince, my bacon lardons, my curing mix and my seasoning mix to this bowl. And then I'm gonna add the red wine. Now I'm gonna mix it by hand. This needs to sit for 48 hours in the fridge. Well, James, as much as I'd love to see you sit there for 48 hours and wait for it, we've already done that bit. Okay. Oh, I'm wrapping a present. What I do is add a little bit of ice cold water. It's getting pasty, which I think is probably a good thing. And it says I need to spray some oil inside it to line it. I've never done that before. Tie a knot in the end, oh God. Tie a knot in the end of the casing. Place one of the casings on the end. Pump the meat in, <laughs> in the casings with your middle and ring finger. Oh, that's pretty much perfect. Well, that is a sauce. Yeah, that's a good looking sauce as well. With a clean toothpick, pierce and remove all visible air pockets. So it it kind of looks like chorizo. Yeah, it does. Hang over sterilized rods. This could be clothing racks or kitchen hooks, etc. At room temperature, every third day, wipe the chorizo in white vinegar. So this is raw right now. Yeah. And we're gonna leave it at room temperature. To cure. Interesting. And then you store it in the fridge for up to seven days or freeze for up to six months. Shall I peek behind the curtain and see what we can find? <laughs> yes, Jamie, we should do that. Wow, big and a small. It's weird. They're really dark, they're really dry. They feel weirdly hollow. So these have had seven days total from start to finish. Yep, so 48 hours chilling in the fridge and then five days hanging. It says it's ready to eat immediately, although that does scare me a little bit. Ooh, smells good. It does look like chorizo. It feels, it feels like half eating chorizo and half cooking chorizo. I reckon that's good to go. There you go. Cheers. Cheers. That is banging. It's hot chorizo. That is spicy. I can taste the wine. Mm. Mm, I'd be happy with that if I came up with that. I would never think about making chorizo at home. And it's super impressive. 
And I can imagine walking past it every day and dousing it in vinegar or whatever. It's quite an interesting process and seeing it change. Big question, how much does the chorizo making kit cost? I'm gonna say 14.99. 14 pounds 14 50. No. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yes. It goes without saying that you can do all of this without a pack. Like you can go out and buy your own ingredients, but you never would. And that's the value in the pack. They get you to do something. I'm very happy with all of them and it worked. Right, over to you. Which of those kits takes your fancy and why? And if you know of any other kits that we should be giving a go, send us a link and we will give them a go. We've also built the Sorted Club, where you can get tons of foodie inspo using the PAX Midweek Meal app, discover and share restaurant recommendations using the Eat app, listen and contribute to our Feast Your Ears podcast, and send us ideas for new cookbooks you'll receive throughout the year. Check it all out by heading to sorted.club. And now a blooper. Yeah, so you carry on shaking the bottle like that, it won't lead to any memes whatsoever. There we go. <laughs> Do your work. <laughs> <laughs>